Welcome back to 60 Minutes. Conrad Murray is the man who killed Michael Jackson. He was also Jackson's personal doctor, paid a small fortune to keep his star patient healthy. In 2011, a jury found Conrad Murray guilty of involuntary manslaughter, convinced he gave the pop star a lethal dose of propofol, a sedative usually only used in surgery. Conrad Murray spent two years in prison for his crime and has just been released. Tonight, for the first time, he tells his story about what happened that night and reveals some surprising thoughts on Michael Jackson's controversial life. I loved Michael. I love Michael Jackson. I love him. Not quite how you'd expect a doctor to describe his relationship with a patient. Uh, how close was that relationship? Uh, I was his closest friend. You see, indeed I was Michael's doctor. But I spent more time with him as a friend than taking care of him medically. I love Michael. I will mourn his loss forever. I am so sad that he is not here. But the reason, of course, his great friend, Michael Jackson, is not here is because Conrad Murray killed him. Yes, sir, I need to, I, uh, I need an ambulance as soon as possible, sir. On June 25th, 2009, a Jackson staff member made an emergency call to paramedics. We have a, a gentleman here that needs help and he's not breathing yet. Did anybody witness what happened? Um, no, just the doctor, sir. Um, doctor, did you see what happened, sir? That doctor is Conrad Murray, heard in the background frantically trying to save his patient. He's pumping, he's pumping his chest, but he's not responding to anything, sir, please. Okay, okay, we're on our way. As paramedics made their desperate dash to UCLA hospital, this was the image telling the world Michael Jackson had died. When did you accept that Michael Jackson was dead? Oh, at UCLA. UCLA. I can tell you, I tried the best I can. I was one man doing CPR ventilating him with an ambu bag, and I did mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. But I wanted to help Michael wholeheartedly. I loved Michael. But two years ago, an L.A. court convicted Conrad Murray of involuntary manslaughter. We, the jury, find the defendant guilty of the crime. The coroner found that Michael Jackson died from acute propofol intoxication, a heavy-duty anaesthetic normally used for surgery patients that Dr. Murray had given him to help him sleep. For $150,000 a month, Dr. Murray was hired to ensure Jackson maintained good health for his final concert tour, This Is It. This is it. You shut down your practice, basically, to go and work exclusively for him. Did you do that for the money? Because you were, you were in debt? Were you starstruck? Were you seduced by fame? Not at all. I've been Michael Jackson's doctor for three years before that time. I was not starstruck by Michael. If it was anything, I was so sympathetic to Michael because of the things I've learned about Michael, the things that he shared with me. But Dr. Murray seemed incapable of resisting requests for inappropriate treatment from his star patient. In the two and a half months before Jackson died, Murray admitted buying more than 15 litres of propofol and sedating his patient with it nearly every night. I did not agree with Michael on using such a powerful sedative for sleep. So what I told Michael is that we have to get you off of that substance. However, I mean, 
call it ideal or non-ideal, Michael Jackson is not the guy you can just say, stop it. But it's not a treatment for insomnia. No matter what he said to you, no matter how he begged, no matter how hard it is that he is Michael Jackson asking you, the truth is, and it's the thing I don't, I don't know why you don't accept, is that you should never have given it to him, ever. Michael Jackson had a lot of doctors who treated him with propofol. Conrad Murray was a doctor that treated Michael with propofol, but with the intention of getting Michael to understand, I do not want you using the substance again. And I succeeded. You may not but, have but liked... But you didn't succeed, though. Well, he let me, died. Let me finish, let me finish. Maybe I'm not making this point very clear. Oh, I, I, I'm hearing you, but you're, yeah. you're not accepting that you thought you were doing the right thing by trying to get him off it, but still using it. Frankly, you should never have given it to him in the first place. This is a recording Dr. Murray made of Michael Jackson while sedating him with propofol. God, God wants me to do it. God wants me to do it. I'm very good to do that. You recorded a conversation you had with Michael Jackson. Why did you do that? Interestingly, you know, I wasn't even aware that I had the recording. Did I record it? Absolutely. It was on my phone. It wasn't done with any intentions that I was going to use this to blackmail Michael one day. It could be my paycheck. Listen to me. If I want to blackmail Michael Jackson, it wouldn't take that phone call. It would be far worse than that. It would shatter the world. Okay? What do you mean by that? Well, that's what I said. On the last day of his life, Dr. Murray claims Jackson was once again unable to sleep and begging him for propofol. When he said to me, if I don't go to rehearsal, I'm going to lose everything. I was already informed that Michael Jackson was over $40 million in the hole in climbing. When I saw how desperate he was, and I knew how much of a destitute he was, and what he was facing, if he did not do this. It all, again, fell in my heart. But you're not his accountant. You're his doctor. I am not his accountant. I'm not his accountant, but I'm just trying to tell you, when, you, when I put the whole situation together, I was very concerned for Michael. Murray gave in. And he says he gave Jackson a small amount of propofol. And when he considered it safe to do so, he left the room for a short time. What was that moment like when you walked into his room and saw he wasn't breathing? 